we need to talk about 1.5 degrees of global warming. Again. There have been a whole host of think pieces claiming that this climate change target is dead. So is this true? Spoiler alert, no. And if we do overshoot 1.5 degrees of global warming, does that spell the end of the world? Also no. Plus stay tuned till the end because I'm going to explain what we need to do now to fight climate change. Just watch till the end, apparently the algorithm is into it. Okay, so let's talk about what we're actually talking about here. This is about limiting global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius relative to how temperatures sort of were before human society industrialized. This limit, 1.5 degrees Celsius, is in the Paris Climate Agreement, but even back then in 2015, it seemed like a super tough target. Okay, but why is this little number such a big deal? Well, let's compare two possible worlds, one which is heated by 1.5 degrees Celsius and another by two degrees. The half a degree between these two would mean a world of difference. 1.5 degrees of global warming would see serious losses to coral reefs, but two degrees could see them virtually eliminated. What's more, on this planet, low-lying island nations could be doomed by sea level rise. For animals and for plants, two degrees would have twice the negative impact as 1.5 degrees. And on this planet, it would be harder for people to get access to fresh water and more difficult to grow certain key crops. And surprise, surprise, a hotter planet means that extreme heat would devastate more people's lives. But heating the planet more than 1.5 degrees Celsius comes with other risks too, like the risks of tipping points, points where the climate would change dramatically and irreversibly. The more we heat the planet, the greater the risk of passing one or many of these tipping points. So where are things today? Well, today the world has already warmed by over one degree Celsius and emissions from fossil fuel burning are still rising when they need to be falling and falling super fast. This is why a recent climate change report from the United Nations concluded that there is no credible pathway to 1.5 degrees C in place. The next sentence was that we need an urgent system-wide transformation to stay under this limit, but most of the reporting around this casually ignored that. Hmm, funny that. It's almost like it's easier to imagine the devastation of the planet than it is to imagine the restructuring of our energy systems. But there's no law of physics stopping us from limiting global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius. Our best understanding is that when we stop emitting carbon dioxide, the world will stop heating. That means until we've passed the 1.5 degree limit, the limit is still possible to achieve if we put in place the urgent system-wide transformation that the United Nations report talks about. But what about if we fail, if we don't transform urgently enough and we overheat the planet? While we often talk about it as if anything under 1.5 degrees is fine and everything above it is, well, f but this is wrong. The choice isn't an either or between a 1.5 degree world and a two degree world. There's a whole spectrum of worlds between these two and the closer we are to this one, the better. Plus the better the chance we have of avoiding multiple tipping points. Even worse, there are worlds even hotter than this one and well, we really want to avoid those. And honestly, this whole is 1.5 degrees possible debate kind of misses the entire point. So many people say, well, 1.5 is dead, so the planet is dead, so we can just give up. But this message of doom is the complete opposite to what the science is showing us. Honestly, it's like talking to some annoying school kid and telling them they might not get an A plus in their exam. <laughs> well, that sucks. Why should I even bother? But you could still get anywhere from an A to an F. Well, who cares? If I can't get an A plus, what's even the point? Except there is still a huge point. I'd much rather live on this planet than on this planet. And to be blunt, I'd have a much better chance of being alive on this planet than this planet. Climate change isn't fine before 1.5 degrees and f***ed afterwards. The world won't end when we pass this limit, but some people's worlds are already ending. 
even at today's levels of global warming. The more we heat the world, the more people's worlds are cut short. More warming means more suffering, and the people that suffer the most are the people who did the least to cause the problem. This is what everyone misses about 1.5 degrees. Whether we're going to be able to stay under that limit or not, it doesn't change what we need to do next. We need to be working hard for our exam. Every bit of emissions we can avoid avoids additional temperature rise and saves lives. And that's true both before and after the 1.5 degree limit. Either way, we need to be stopping burning fossil fuels as quickly as we possibly can to stop the world heating as quickly as we possibly can. That's it. So let's sum up. Is limiting global warming to 1.5 degrees incredibly hard? Yes. Is it impossible? No. Does overheating the planet past this limit suck? Yeah. Does that mean we get to give up? No way. And why not? Well, because we could still get anywhere from an A to an F. And what does the world need to do next? The same thing we've been saying we need to do for literal decades. Stop burning fossil fuels. But wait, does all this mean that focusing on hard limits when we talk about climate change is kind of stupid? Yeah, kind of. Here's why. Okay, until next time. Bye. Key cop, cops? Oh dear, cops.